Thank you, Chairman. I'm uh, delighted to have the chance to be here before the subcommittee, and I'm uh, delighted to be recommending this legislation developed with uh, your member and my friend, Senator Cassidy. Um, as I think the entire committee knows, the Biden administration has pledged to develop 30 gigawatts of offshore wind, and almost all of that development is going to take place along the northern Atlantic coast. Um, so states like Rhode Island, uh, and frankly from Maine all the way down through the Carolinas, um, have a very strong interest in making sure that as this proceeds, there is fairness and revenue to the host states that will be supporting this offshore wind development. At the moment, if we were to develop an oil and gas fixture offshore, we would fit into an existing, robust, well-established revenue template for the revenues associated with that facility. When it's offshore wind, it's new. And so we're at a very distinct disadvantage as those neighboring states, um, as offshore wind develops, compared to the states uh, that have um, oil and gas facilities offshore. So point one is that we need to provide that fairness and that revenue to the uh, adjoining states. Point two is that coasts and oceans are going to be the focus of much of our attention in the years ahead as enormous changes come to oceans and coasts, primarily because of climate change. I'm a big fan of the Land and Water Conservation Fund, but my friend Senator Heinrich has been with me on the floor, and Senator Cassidy has been very active on this as well. The Land and Water Conservation Fund is very good for upland projects, and it's very good for freshwater projects. It is not helpful, or rarely helpful, for coastal or offshore uh, preservation. That's really overlooked. And so what we do with some of this new funding is to try to stand oceans and coasts to a place that is more even with upland and freshwater through the Land and Water Conservation Fund, and that's by growing the national uh, OCSF, the Oceans and Coast Security Fund. So this will do that by sending 37.5% of offshore wind revenues to that fund, but that's going to take a while to stand up. And in the meantime, we also add 12.5% of GOMESA funds uh, to that fund. Um, the third thing that this does, consistent with the desire to develop more clean, renewable offshore wind, is that it would remove a really bleak disincentive that Gulf states would face. By bringing the two funding platforms level, a Gulf state can say, well, I can license offshore wind and I can license the existing oil and gas, and I can make that decision on the merits because the dollars are the same. Absent this bill, those states will get 37.5% for oil and gas development, and they will get completely skunked for offshore wind. It is completely inconsistent with President Biden's goals to have that disincentive persist. The um, last thing is that the uh, Gulf Coast, this is a bipartisan bill, and we want to keep it a bipartisan bill. And the Gulf Coast gets some value out of this. It gets lifts in the caps that otherwise would stop the formula money that goes to various uses. Um, it lifts from 37.5 to 50 percent, the amount of money that goes to the states, as it would for the offshore wind. They, go, they stay in parity. And as the troubles that we all know are facing the oil and gas industry come at us, I think it's important for these states to get this additional revenue to help them deal with the transition. So I support those programs as an important part of the deal. We need to help these states stabilize revenues that will fall, and we need to help these states, including mine in this case, fund coastal needs that will rise. So I'm very grateful to Senator Cassidy for his work uh, on all of this. I think we have a terrific compromise here. 
and I think it solves two really vital problems that are environmental problems. One, really hard to get offshore wind going in the Gulf if you're giving those states zero while you're still rewarding oil and gas development. And two, really hard to deal with the coastal and oceans issues that are so pressing right now without robbing from the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which already is fully subscribed, and that's why you need the funding to go to this new um, vehicle. And I want to thank Senator Heinrich for joining us in all of this. I know his state is much squarer than mine and has no coast, uh, but he does love the oceans too, and he understands the importance of this. Thank you, Madam Chair.